What's going on everybody, James here from Artificial Entertainment and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. And today we're going to be taking a look at melee damage, so let's go ahead and dive in. Alright, so I have here a project and 5.1 is a third person project and it's the same one that we were working out of in the aim offset video. Now a couple of things just to note is that I do already have a simple attack as well as the ability to pick up weapons and certain things like that, so there are some basic foundations already in here. However, if you haven't learned how to be able to do that, I do have videos videos on how to be able to pick up weapons, how to be able to set dynamic pickups and variables, as well as how to be able to create a very simple melee combo. So if you if you have all that set up, then awesome. If not, go back, maybe watch a couple of the other videos. If you're feeling confused at all, then come back here and you'll be just fine. But just to show you guys, if I hit play here, we're going to go ahead and uh, just draw the sword. You can see I can do a little attack and I can go ahead and put the sword away. So. We have some very basic movement here, but what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to be able to set up a very nice, simple damage system. So what we're going to do is we're going to need a couple of things. First thing is going to be an Anim Notify, and the other thing is going to be a simple interface. And the reason for the interface is mainly just because I don't trust Unreal Engine's default event any damage. Just not something I've ever found consistency in, so I like to make my own interfaces. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our own damage interface. Now, there, if you guys saw, there might have been one there, but it's it was old from stuff that I was testing. So we're going to go a new one. So we're going to right click blueprints and we're going to go blueprint interface. And we're going to go damage underscore interface. Double click, open it up, apply damage. Now you can do things in here like you can add in damage amounts and all that good stuff, but for me I'm just going to leave it blank because I don't really have any damage amounts. This is just mainly creating the code for how to be able to have it detect and do the things you want it to do when you want it to do it. Now we also need to make sure we have sockets or points on our mesh or our weapon that we're going to be using. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on the sword here. You can see I've got this little reference here. If you click on it and then press Control e together, it'll pull up a reference for it, but it'll pull up the... Um, like the blueprint for itself but from here i can just go to the static mesh and sword and pull that up all right so now in 5.1 there's something really cool called the socket manager it allows us to be able to add points to static meshes which were previously we couldn't do this so what we're going to do is we're going to create one socket call it tip create another socket call it base now we want to make sure that tip is at the tip and base is at the base you know pretty straightforward so we'll move these both into place like so, and then we'll click on save. Done. There we go. So now we got our sword. We got our interface. Now we just need to go and create a simple trace that we can call through a notify. So we're going to open up our third person blueprints, PP third person character, whatever your character uh, was. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click, create a custom event, and we're going to name this one start melee trace. And then we're going to pull off the little red pin here. And we're going to go set timer by event. And we're going to make sure the time is set to 0 0.01. Looping is true off the return value. Pull off and clear and invalidate timer by handle. You don't want these to be hooked up like that, though, because we're going to create another custom event. And this one is going to be end melee trace. And we're going to hook these up like so, because these are going to be our two callable events to be able to start and end our traces. Now, off of the set timer by event, what we're going to want to do is pull off and we're going to do a sphere trace by channel. And the start and end is only going to be the tip and base that we made. So we're, I'm going to be using a, a weapon that is currently just already attached to the character, but I'm going to show you guys how to do it with a pickup as well um, after this part, because there's really only a couple of changes that you need to make for a pickup. But we're going to pull off of the melee weapon. We're going to get socket location. And we're going to get two of these. Plug both of these into the target. First one's going to be tip. And then base. And then we're going to plug start and end just like so. So now we have a start and end location from basically covering the entire blade of our sword. Now because we're using a sphere trace, we also have a radius. So I'm going to set it to 20. And then we're going to do the standard branch. Hit, uh, return value into the condition. Break the out hit result. Just like that. Now remember, we made that interface earlier, so we actually want to go ahead and we want to add these in now as well. So we're going to go to our class settings, go to our implemented interfaces, add, and we're going to add that damage interface. 
Now we also want to make sure to add it onto our AI character that we're going to be damaging as well. So I'm going to click on this guy, Control E, to be able to bring up his full thing here. And we're going to go to Class Settings, Add, Damage, Damage Interface, and there we go. Now we have the Apply Damage Interface. So I'm just going to hook this up. As you can see, it's just a little montage here, um, just to show you. It's just a little hit React. That's really all it is. But now that we have the interface in there, what we can do is we'll bring this up again. And we want to look at a couple of things. So first thing is the hit actor does implement interface. Damage interface. Boom. Just like that. And then we're just going to hook up a quick branch. True. And just like so. Return value. There we go. So now if we get a hit. And we're checking to see if they do have the damage interface. This way you can accidentally do a trace on an enemy you may not want to damage, but it won't actually apply the damage. But there's another thing we want to do. We want to create an array or a variable that's going to be able to tell us whether or not we've already hit the enemy. So this way we don't hit one enemy multiple times. So we're going to create a new variable. We're going to call this damaged enemies. And we're going to change it from a boolean to an actor. And we're going to make this an actor object reference. And we're going to change it from a single under the container type to an array. So from here, we're going to pull off this newly created array. And we're going to get a contains item and push this hit actor into the contains item. Because we want to make sure that if we've already hit this, um, you know, this particular enemy that we're hitting or we're detecting, we, want, we don't want to hit them a second time. Unless it's a completely new hit, which we will be able to do. So if it does contain, so if we do have the interface and it do get a hit, but if it does contain, true is going to be blank, but false, we're going to take the damaged enemies. I'm just kind of highlighting and duplicating. And we're going to go add unique because this will ensure, even though realistically there shouldn't be a double call, this will make sure that even if there is, it won't matter. So we're going to go add unique, hook this up off of false, and then we're going to take the hit actor plug it in just like that so this way it'll add this to the array and then we're going to pull off the hit actor again and apply damage and we're going to make sure to get the apply damage message because this is the one that is currently hooked up to the interface so very important there we go so now we have something to call our trace something to add so this way we can only hit the enemy once but we also need to make sure we're resetting this array as well so we're going to bring in the damaged enemies array and this is off of the end melee trace here in the beginning with the clear and invalidate timer by handle i'm just going to pull off and we're going to clear the array so there we go so now we have our code now we just need a way to be able to call this code so what we're going to do is i'm going to go to my sword attack here this is the montage we're going to pull it up and we're going to add these notifies in all right, so you can see here that my sword attack, it's kind of just like a little sideways slash here. But what we're going to do is we're going to find right about where he starts to do the attack section. And we're going to go add notify, new notify, start melee trace. And then we're going to look for wherever it ends, which is right about there. Right click, new notify, and this one's going to be end melee trace. So now we've got start and end, so where it'll kind of go from here to here there we go but now we need to add these into our animation blueprint which we can do by clicking on this little uh, icon at the top here where it's like three little yellow dots and this way we can pull ourselves you want to be in the event graph so if yours doesn't pull you into the event graph you can just go right to an open spot once you're in it and then we're going to right click and we're going to look for start melee trace now we're also going to get the as BP third person character or whatever you named your character reference um, because generally in every animation blueprint you're going to have one of these. We're going to pull off and then just get the start melee trace. So a little custom event that we just made and then again same thing we're going to do the end melee trace notify and then get the end melee trace custom event that we made called off of it. So this way we're calling and ending the trace based off of points in the animation rather than points that are being defined based off of like a delay value. So now if I go ahead and I draw my weapon, you'll see that nothing happens right now, and that's okay. If we go to the draw debug type and change to for duration, 
and we do the same thing, it's a different story. So it is working. I just forgot to set the draw debug type. So now if we go up to our enemies here, which they um, they do have the visibility trace channel already selected. And if I just do this, you'll see that hit at the top is being uh, printed out once for each enemy hit. Three enemies means that it's being done three times. If I take one of these guys out, hit play, and bring out the sword, and do this, you'll see it only does it twice. So even though it's detecting the enemy molt more than once, it's only hitting them once because of this nice array variable that's being uh, reset based off of that notify. Now let's talk about if you wanted to be able to use, again, a, like a pickup weapon. How would you go about doing that? Well, there's a few things that you would need to change. So the first thing is, is we're going to want to go to whatever your interaction interface is that you're using to be able to pick up and swamp weapons and do all that kind of stuff. So we're going to go into, I have tutorial assets here. If we go into data, we're going to see this interaction interface. Now, uh, you'll see here that we have the get socket info function. So this is going to be what you're going to want. This is going to be one of the main things you're going to want to do is add this and make sure that it has, it doesn't really need the requesting actor section, but you're going to want to make sure that it has um, the static mesh reference, and you're going to want to set this to actually a scene component and object reference. So you're going to set the static mesh reference to actually the scene component object reference. If we compile and save, go back to our BP third person character, and then offer the start melee trace, if we pull back here, and we get the player weapon. So this is the same mapping variable. If you guys watch the multi-weapon system series, you guys are familiar with this, where we have like, you know, pistol, rifle, sword, all the different things that we were doing. So you would pull off of this, find, find the weapon that you're looking for. For me, it's going to be melee. And then for you guys, you might have that struct variable. So you're just going to look for the actor um, object reference off of that. And then we're going to pull off and we're going to get the socket info. So we're going to get that socket info right there. Plug that in just like so. And then plug this into the sphere trace. And then we're going to delete. So this melee weapon reference here is referencing this here. So I'm going to take this. And we're going to plug this in here instead. And then I can actually take out this melee weapon here completely. So now we're just utilizing this finding the actor reference, going in, getting the socket info, and then using that tip and base. Even if you have multiple weapons, so long as you have a tip and base socket on these weapons, you will be just fine. It doesn't really matter. You will, it'll work just exactly the same. So now if I go ahead and I hit play, you'll see I don't have a sword on me now. But now I do. I just picked one up. And I can go ahead and click on. All right. So one thing we just have to do. I uh, unfortunately forgot to do this and my engine crashed. Uh, but we're back up here. And uh, we got to make sure that we do add the um, get the socket info onto the actual weapon itself. So we're going to go ahead and open up the weapon here. Open up the full blueprint editor. Uh, we want to look for the weapon master. All right. So we want to make sure that we have the uh, get socket info here. We want to make sure that we actually have the static mesh reference plugged in because if we don't, then, well, yeah, we caused the engine to crash. So let's try this again, shall we? And we'll go ahead and click on play. Go ahead and pick up my sword here. And then if I go and attack, you'll see that now we're doing the trace. And it's doing the trace off of the picked up weapon. I can go ahead and then go up to the enemies here. All right, it looks like when they editor crashed it also made it so that way my interface was no longer attached to the ai characters um but now we can see if we go ahead and attack we get hit times three doing exactly what it's supposed to do based off of the picked up weapon so and this this system will work very cleanly again with any type of weapon that you want to use it for whether this be multiple different uh, melee weapons you know axes swords all that type of stuff so long as you have something that says tip and base realistically it doesn't matter because it's just going to be looking for the socket names and whatever the socket info is going to be for this actual information it really doesn't matter so long as again the names are consistent and it has a location for each of these so again, this is just kind of a very simple damage system calling off of Anim Notifies, allowing you to be able to hit multiple enemies, but without over-tracing or under-tracing for certain enemies. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll be doing another one on range damage coming up soon. So stick around, guys, and I hope you enjoyed. And as always, stay animated.